Well, a very good morning to everyone. As you can see, if you're not aware, Pastor Dave is not here today. You figured that out? Yeah. Okay. If you weren't here recently. Right now, he's probably, he's probably still over Europe, maybe going into Russia, heading towards the Philippines. He's got an 18-hour flight. Um, he'll be um, doing all kind of wedding preparations for our brother Nick Deanna, who's getting married uh, next Sunday. And then the following week, he'll be teaching at a Bible college. And he'll be back... Oh, I forget the date. He's going to be gone a couple of weeks or so. But uh, two weeks, two weeks in a day or something like that, yeah. Um, this morning, as I was sitting in Dave's office and um, just going over uh, what I'm planning on preaching, I... Um, you hear all the hustling and bustling around as the worship team is is practicing and the ladies in the kitchen are all getting things done and Sunday school teachers are getting around and their assistants and it's it's truly amazing to to see everybody coming together for one purpose and we're here to celebrate and worship our great God. Amen? Amen. I mean, uh, I'm a, I've been called a uh, overthinker in, uh, in my life. <laughs> or deep. I like to think and contemplate things. And I, um, me just standing here and talking with all of you about the things of the Lord and what I have mined out of his word... Uh, it's just um, too too much for me to um, to grasp. I mean, who who am I? Amen. You know, but but you know what? God uses anybody, Amen. and um, even miserable, stupid wretches like me. <laughs> but I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then we're going to get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that we can get together, your saints gather together to bring glory to your name, to proclaim it, to learn, to have fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit within us that teaches us and guides us in all truth. Thank you for the wonderful and horrible death of our Christ, our Lord, who suffered and died in our place so that we might not be found guilty, but are not guilty because of what our faith says in Christ. Oh God, be with us this morning. Be with all the Sunday school teachers and their children. Lord, bless this day for your sake. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So before I get started, that's my second before I get started, <laughs> I, I want to talk about because what I'm about to teach, and what we always what we always teach here, is instructions for for Christians. So if you're not a believer today, this this whatever's being taught here could be impossible. Well, it's not could be; it will be. And unless uh, you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit residing in you. You're born again. Uh, whatever is being said here is it's almost like a foreign language. Everything in the Bible is spiritually discerned, and it's spiritual words. It's not like any other book. So, um, whether you know it or not, if you, uh, if if you're not a believer, you're in trouble, and you're you're in trouble with Almighty God. But God loved you so much that He sent His only begotten Son for you to die in your place, so that you wouldn't have to face judgment. And we're all guilty. The Bible says we're all guilty. So, so the Bible says you place your trust in Christ for your stand before God. So when God looks at you, he no longer looks at you as a guilty sinner, but he looks at you as someone that has put his trust in his son. So I would encourage you and I beg you to put your hope and your love and your trust in Jesus Christ. And if you need any 
guidance or assistance in that, please come see me or anyone that's in this place that's a Christian and we will wholeheartedly share the gospel with you and get that straight in your life. Guess who that's a picture of? <laughs> so that, that's a picture of me. So when I was, when I was preparing this, I, I wanted to talk about being afraid or fear, um, the trials we go through in life. And um, while I got to preach a message up here, oh, oh, I'm so scared. I haven't been up. You know, I, have, I preached last year. It was almost exactly one year ago. I don't know whether you were here or not. Oh, and before I get started, I'm sorry. <laughs> Another third. Did everyone get a bulletin? You remember those days I used to make announcements? Did everyone turn their cell phones down? Yes. Okay. Are you a visitor here today? Are you a first-time visitor? Have you received a welcome packet? Yes. If you haven't, if you've been here for a while and you haven't filled out a welcome card, please raise your hand and an usher will get you one. Okay. I just wanted to do that. For fun. Old time's sake. Yeah. So I thought to myself, what am I afraid of? And what am I here for? What, what is the purpose of me being up here? Am I putting on a show? Am I putting on theatrics um, so I can go, wow, I did a good job? No. I'm here to present truth that I found in the word of God that I want to present to you. That's not a show. That's, that's love. And I care for you because I'm an elder in this church. And I do. I really do care for you. And I pray for you. And um, that's all i got to say about that. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. This is how we get, right, when things happen, we're fearful, and, and our mind is just thinking of a zillion things. It's like we're on this tightrope. That's me, afraid of heights. <laughs> We've got to demolish this fear. But how do we do that? Psalm 139, 23. I don't know who this person is. Pastor Dave did that for me. Supposedly, <laughs> his name is Fear, I think. Is anybody, am I right? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. My dear late mother had this entire psalm to memory. And I didn't even know it. Um, she um, was diagnosed with a massive brain tumor in the beginning of the year. And she died in about four months. This was back in 2009. And I spent four glorious months with her every day. And she, she recited this every day by memory. I loved it. Prayed with her, sang with her. The look of fear. I'm going to tell you about a story. Most of you might know it. Some of you may not. King Jehoshaphat. I'm not going to get into the historical uh, side of the story. Oh, maybe a little. Um, he was one of the good kings, Jehoshaphat. Uh, he had his ups and downs. If you were to read um, the earlier chapters and the end of this chapter, you'll see how he's not done the job that he wanted, but he, he started out that he, he sent um, prophets and Levites around throughout Judah to teach the word of God, and he set out to get rid of the high places, which were the places where um, people worship foreign gods. But let's, let's read. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. So here's the problem. A great multitude is about to attack Judah. What's the problem we have in our life? Or well, problems, right? Is it a bad health report? 
we're going to lose our job? Is there a death in the family? Is it a health report about your child, your spouse? Fill in the blank. So what do we do with our problems? Where do we go? The storms of life. They're going to come. They're guaranteed. The scripture says, I'll read a verse later. They're guaranteed to come. We're promised this by the Lord, by the way, that the storms of life are coming. Okay? You see what that house is built on? On the rock. Well, here's Jehoshaphat's response. Fear. Some, some translations say he was terrified. If you, were, if you were in a country and you were the king and you were outnumbered maybe 10 to 1, 15, 20 to 1, I'd be afraid too. What about you? I'd be afraid. But what does he do? And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. He made a conscious decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm fearful, but I'm setting my mind to seek the Lord, right? He didn't say, oh, I'm fearful. I'm, I, I'm just going to freak out, and I, I'm just going to stay in that way, and I'm not, I don't know what to do. I'm going to chew my nails. I'm going to sit in the corner. I'm going to get on my phone. I'm going to call my friends and complain. Did you hear? They're coming against me. What am I going to do? Blah, 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 blah. What, what does he do? He sets himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So the first thing he was, he was afraid. I mean, if I got news that I'm going to die or I have cancer or something's going to happen, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go, oh, well, no. I'm human, I'm going to be afraid. But then I'm going to, I want to be like Jehoshaphat. I want to set my mind on the Lord. And believe me, this whole sermon, I, I got very much convicted about, this was, uh, I'm like, how can I preach this when, I'm false, when I fall so short? So Judah gathered himself to ask help from the Lord. And then he, he shared. It takes humility to look to God first and then ask others for help. Are you too proud to ask others for help? Do you say, well, I got this. I got this. No. Ask others for help. That's what we're here for, right? We're here to help and comfort each other, take on each other's burdens, pray for each other, right? This is not a bowling team, right? This is not uh, the Kiwanis Club. We're the family of God. You're a, we're brothers and sisters in the Lord together. So don't, don't, don't be shy. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about for tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So here's Jehoshaphat's prayer. And he said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham your friend forever? And they dwell in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and you cry out and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now 
Here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Did you catch that? We don't know what to do. Amen. But our eyes are on you. Amen. All right, so you could feel lost and lonely. That's okay. I can, you can be honest with God, right? <laughs> Honesty is the best policy, right? <laughs> God knows everything inside you bef before you. He knows you better than you know yourself. So you could be honest and say, I don't know what to do. Imagine this is the king of Judah. I don't know what to do. And he's humble, right? He goes, but I know one thing. My eyes are on you. Amen. All right, so you, you can feel like you're in the lowest of the lowest of the low and there's no answer. But you know what? My eyes are on you. And just something else I wanted to give you. Did you notice where it said um, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir that you wouldn't, he would not let, God instructed them not to invade them when they came out of Egypt because they were the descendants of Esau and Lot. But now this is, this is what now Jehoshaphat says. Look at how, you know, we, we, we spared them. Now they're rewarding us by coming out to throw us out of real possession. So... That, that's a little bit of that if you were wondering what that meant. Here's the answer. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. How about that? Hmm? Families praying together. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziel. Who's this person? The son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. So it wasn't the king that got this word. It was Jehaziel. So when you're in trouble, maybe it's not who you think might have the answer. It's a, maybe it's someone in the pews. It might not be Pastor Dave that has the answer for you, or Carl, or Randy, or Joe, or Johnny. You know, maybe it's the guy sitting next to you or the girl sitting next to you in the pew, right? And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, look at this guy, telling Jehoshaphat, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Can, can we all say that together? You ready? Do not be disfraid or dismayed. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Let's remember that. If you, don't, if, you, if you forget everything about today, remember the battle is not ours, it's God's. All right? we, we don't battle. We get in the game. All right? we, we, it's not like we don't do anything but the battle is God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. You see that? So the battle is God's, but what, does this make sense? The battle is God's, but he says, but go down. Did you, did you catch that? They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jer Jeroel. Excuse me, I don't know how to talk... Uh, this stuff. And I didn't look up how to say things, so whatever. You will not need to fight in this battle. Did you see that? Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Can I get an amen? Amen. Doesn't this, I don't know, this excites me. This excites me. Tomorrow, this reminds me of like when, when uh, King uh, David, he, when he talked to um, the giant, Goliath. Goliath. Thank you. 
And he says, well, why are you afraid of this uncircumcised Philistine, you know? Uh, it's, uh, Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Do you see this? So, boy, it's hard, right? Trials are hard and, and we're fearful. And when the enemy is coming and things are not working the way we want them to work. You get that? The way we think things should go, right? Because we want things, we don't want trouble, right? We want things to go smooth. And then when, when there's a little hiccup in life, we go, oh, where's, where's God? Where's this God that I saw on the TV and I'm not going to have any problems? And, and, and uh, you know, I, I gave my $1,000, right? You know, what's going on? Life's not working out. You know? Faith. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohenites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Remember, this is before the battle. Okay? We're talking about a massive amount of, of, of the enemy coming against Judah. So you have to step out into faith, right? It, it, it's, we believe in a God that we can't see, you see? We don't hear him, we don't see him, we can't feel him. We trust, we have faith. The just shall live by faith. Religion tells you you can trust in doing this and doing that and doing this, and doing that, and everything will be okay as long as you do these things, see? But as a believer, we step out, and we trust, and it's faith. Hear me, O Judah. Did I skip something? So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. That's the word of God, right? Believe his prophets. Amen. Believe in the Lord your God. Trust. You're in that valley right now? Believe. Amen. It's, it's easier said than done. I understand that. But this is the word of God. What would you rather do? Not believe? Give up? Throw, throw in the towel? Don't do that. And even if you do, you know what? The Lord's got your back. He will never, ever, ever forsake you. If you're one of his children, he will never forsake you. Amen. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. This is before the battle. This is before any enemy was killed or anything. Look at this. All right? You get the, you get in the picture of where our lives should be? It's hard, but it's, this is the word of God. Here's the victory. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and... They were defeated, for the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Isn't that, isn't that convenient, right? <laughs> so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, you know, they're following the instructions of the Lord, you know, go here, stand here, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. So they went to, to, so when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were the dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry 
which they stripped off for themselves, more than they can carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Three days. How many of you have ever gone through the valley and then have come out the other end and go, God is so good. And, 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 he, and he's more than I could have imagined. You know, like the, the goodness of God. All right? And if not, like when I always think about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, when they didn't bow the knee in the fiery furnace, if the Lord doesn't rescue us, we still will not bow the knee to your God. We're not going to do it. I keep losing my spot. Where am I? Where am I? Someone help me. 26. All right. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barakiah, I think. For they were blessed for the Lord. Blessed for they, there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of that place was called the valley of Baraka until this day. Thank you. And that means blessing. Baraka means blessing. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. Amen. Here's the result. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of these countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realms of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest. And they praised the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story? When we go through something and we're at work or among our families or with people, can the, can the world point and say, it was their God, right? Or we like the others. I mean, I, 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 I tend to be more like I was in the world, the world, and I, I you know, and I, and and I, I don't beat myself up. I try not to, and I, I want to be in the mindset of, I'm in the, I'm in God's hands, you see, and I don't. I tr we should try not to freak out, right? We want to get on that phone and complain. Oh, my boss stinks, and this stinks, and um, my coworkers, and this and that. And it seems like I always fall into that trap, you know. But this has very much convicted me. This preparing for this. I want the people that are around me in my life to know it was the Lord Amen. that rescued me, and not my smarts or my intellect, whatever you want to call it. Like, the storms of life are going to come on us, okay? They're coming. And if you've been blessed not to have one, I'm, I'm sorry, they're going to come. And if even if they don't come, we're all going to die one day, all right? Now, you know, medicine is great, but it hasn't solved death, right? Death and taxes, right? And they can't avoid them. And um, so let's... Let's die well, I say, right? Amen. Right? I, uh, I don't want to make someone cry in here, but I, I, my, my good buddy, uh, Mark, uh, died well. Um, those of you that know Mark Makarski. And I remember spending uh, just a few days before he died. I mean, I was there before he, right before he died, but right, I mean, we would, we walked down the hall in the hospital and sat in, in this nice little lobby, and we and we we had a chat, and we talked, and we prayed, and and um, we had a little elder meeting, you know, and started talking about you guys and praying for you, and 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 then afterwards, I went, wow, look at, wow, look at this man, he's he's trusting in the Lord, and um, that just stuck with me. And then my other dear brother John uh, D'Angelo, uh, I mean, just I saw him the night before he died. And he's, I mean, he's praying for me, praying for my family. And I'm like, wow, I want to go like that. Amen. I, I want to go with my trust in the Lord and, 
and stand firm and, and, and not be dismayed and not be afraid. Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, this is Jesus talking, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So we all think of Jesus as the rock, which he is, but in this passage and also the, 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 the like passage in Luke, the sayings of Christ, the word of God is the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, the word of God, the sayings of Christ. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell. And great was the fall. How was the fall? It was great. It was great. Why do we go through these things? Why? Why? Well, here's one of the things. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. See? Is everything about you? If everything is about you, you're going to be a miserable, miserable, miserable person. Because all you're going to see is trouble. And I don't want trouble in my life. I want to just have a nice, safe life with no trouble and go into eternity like that. Well, I'm going to read a verse, which I don't have up there. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18 to 25. It says, Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh, for this is commendable. If because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully, for what credit is it? If when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called. Did you hear that? For to this you were called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. You hear that? Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. On the tree. You know what that means from the Old Testament? Anyone hung on a tree? You're cursed. Christ became a curse for us. He was separated from his father. We don't understand that. I don't know if we ever will. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ had perfect communion, oneness, with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he was separated for us because God could not look on sin. He became sin for us. He was hung on a tree. He became a curse for us. If that doesn't stir you, I don't know what will. So I pray for you that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So the whole crux of Christianity, 
and the life of Christ is others focused. The two greatest commandments, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Where, where is the selfishness in all of that? Amen. All right, it's not all about us. We got to, as Joan, no, what, 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 I think, where's Teresa? Is Teresa Sanford here? No. What's her friend's name? Eunice. No, Eunice. the one that doesn't come anywhere. She's, um, oh, Joan Nixon. Joan Nixon, she used to always say this over and over again. Get over yourself. <laughs> Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Get over yourself. We have a wonderful example that we just spent so much time in that Pastor Dave was teaching about. And that's the life of Joseph. And I'm going to just go over his life briefly. I won't keep you here all day. The key to what I see the scriptures is just to trust. Trust in the sovereignty of God. If, if we don't have that, then we're just... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what else. To, I, we, it, God is, is, it's God is God. Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song, God is God and I am not. It's a great song if, you ever, uh, if you're into Stephen Curtis Chapman. God is God and I am not. God's sovereignty. So here's, here's Joseph, if you don't recall, and I'll recount it quickly. Maybe not so quickly. He was one of 12 brothers. And I won't go over every detail, but they hated his guts. And they wanted him dead. Now imagine your siblings wanting you dead. Okay, picture that. Put yourself, I'm going to tell this story and try to put yourself in Joseph's shoes. Not just hearing it as a story in the Bible and, and uh, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's nice, that's nice. They wanted him dead, but then they sell him into slavery instead. Oh, what a nice bunch of boys. Now, we don't hear any complaints from Joseph. His brothers wanted him dead, and now he's going into slavery. Okay. And now he's in Potiphar's house. And he's there, and he's managing the house. And now he gets accused of rape. The man has done nothing. He's accused of rape and thrown into prison. Picture yourself like this. You know, we complain all the time about stuff, right? He's thrown into prison. And you don't see him do anything. There's no complaining to God. There's no saying, you know, uh, God, what are you doing here? What's going on? And not to say that we can't, and I want to make myself perfectly clear. God wants us to, he wants to hear from us. So don't take this as a message. I, I don't want to, I, I can't complain to God or anything. God is your heavenly father who loves and cherishes you, loves you so much he sent his only begotten son for you. So by all means, talk to God. He then ends up in prison, as I said, and the, 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 the baker and the, is it the candlestick maker? No, it's the baker, the butler, the cup bearer, and the, and the baker. They have these dreams. They, they, they're thrown into prison by Pharaoh. And Joseph interprets these dreams for them. But, but first he says, oh, your countenance looks so down. Why? So here, Joseph cares for people, right? His heart. So he, he's, he, says, well, I, I can interpret those dreams, but my, I, I'm sorry, God can interpret those dreams, and he interprets them, and he restores one, and the other one is, is, is hanged in three days. He said, but don't forget me. Tell Pharaoh about me. They forget about him. So he doesn't um, get told by, uh, he, Pharaoh doesn't find out about these two guys, about uh, Joseph. So now he's stuck in prison. You know what I would have said? What's going on? Well, I told this guy to tell Pharaoh, and now I'm stuck here again. Right? Well, now Pharaoh has this dream about all uh, the lean years and the heavy, the, well, he doesn't know the lean. He has these dreams about 
the uh, the 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 cows, the the deplete, the 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 weak, the 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 gaunt cows and the strong cows, seven this, seven that. So um, the cupbearer says, "Oh, I know someone who can interpret those dreams." He finds, gets Joseph out of prison. Joseph tells Pharaoh to, what the dream is, and Pharaoh puts him in command of all of Egypt, and now he's at the top, right? Then his brothers come. His brothers come. Then Joseph has an opportunity to put his brothers in prison, right? But he doesn't. He loves them. I'm not going to go through the whole story, right? Because his brothers, the, 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 there was a, a, a famine, <laughs> a famine in the land of, of, of Israel. So they come to get wheat from Israel. So Joseph loves his brothers, and then he makes himself known to them. He loves his brothers so much, he's crying and weeping and crying and weeping. He didn't take retribution against his brothers. I would have. I, I would have let them have it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my chance. I'm king. right? But Joseph doesn't do that. And he restores them, their, their, their relationship. He weeps on them. They go back and they bring their father, Jacob. 17 years pass, Jacob dies. And now the brothers are scared. And they go, now Joseph will, he's going to get us now because Jacob's dead. Our father is dead. There's no protection for us. What's Joseph's reaction? He loves them. He's heartbroken because he sees the sovereignty of God in all this. And what does he say to them? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. He did not excuse their sin. Okay? You notice? He said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. But he sees the sovereignty in the hand of God throughout his whole life. That's just an amazing, amazing example of the sovereignty of God. Amen. I was think I was going to um, add a couple of things, but I'm going to. I think I'm going to end there. And I just want to thank all of you for being here and listening to this message. I hope it made an impact in your life. And uh, it was a privilege and an honor to be here and to bring you the word of God. And I hope you benefited from it because that's the only reason that I'm here right now. And I'm here. I'm here for you. Just to let you know, I'm, I'm one of the elders in the church. Randy, can you stand up, Randy? Randy Glenn? John DiMissari? Johnny D? Johnny D right there. So we're, we're the elders of this church. If you need any kind of spiritual help, please see one of us and we will be more, more than happy. We'd be tickled pink to, to share with you the word of God. And, and if you're not a believer, please come see us and we will uh, most definitely uh, want to bring you into the kingdom by, the, by faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Let, let's pray, and then the, the worship team can come up. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we, we want to thank you so much for being such a good, good, good Father. Thank you for your word. What would we do without your word, Lord? Thank you for preserving it. Thank you for the freedom we have right now. Lord, we pray for our pastor on his journey to the Philippines. We pray for Nick. We pray for the, the country of Israel right now. Please be with them. Save them, Lord. Bring, bring the gospel to that place, Lord. Lord, be with us in this day. Let us not live Sunday and then walk out of this place and forget what we've learned or, or live life apart from you. Lord, may we be people of faith. May we shine in our lives for the gospel. Lord, may we, we be lights for Jesus Christ in this 
dying world, this sinful world. Help us to have mercy and pity upon all those that we are around and pray. And we thank you and pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.